Thank you. Um, thank you for the invitation here this evening to speak. I hope I'm not going to bore you too much, and I shall try and make my presentation brief. I feel quite honoured that I've been asked this evening because I was a contributor to the Barriers Report and um, was interrogated quite considerably by Kerry and the team here and Dermot. Um, and this is a result, the, the winning and tendering is a result of that, the outcome of that report. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit about myself, who I am and what the company is and help you appreciate um, the sort of difficulties and the, the barriers that we, we come across as a company. Um, press the right one. Um, I'm Chris Wynn, the Managing Director. I'm the third, third generation in a family business which was established in 1926. And for the, the 80 odd years that we've been in business, we've been associated throughout that time with work in the public sector. So we rely very heavily on winning work from the public sector. Um, we, uh, we employ 53 people directly and 170 people indirectly at the moment on contracts in, in North Wales alone. We have a very large local supply chain um, and we do our very best to ensure that contracts that we place, subcontracts that we place, do go to local companies. We have a 20, 20 million turnover, and the sectors we work in for the public sector include education, lifelong learning, um, which is schools, universities, colleges of further education. We work in the health sector, um, hospitals, clinics, rehabilitation centres, leisure, industrial, conservation, refurbishment and civic and municipal buildings. So we have quite a wide portfolio of, of, of work, but this all relies heavily on winning work from the public sector. Um, we've carried out a lot of work in, in, in and around North Wales and still, still doing so. So I just put a few pictures up there to, for you to appreciate the sort of diversity of, of what we're doing. The school at the top was one of the first eco-friendly schools here in, in Wales, I think, at um, Uskla Graig in Llangevny. And the bottom left is, is a project we're working on at Colwyn Bay now, the new uh, park areas development project, which will be the new North Wales Rugby Academy. Um, moving on, our work does, we do do work the other side of the border in, in the North West and we go through tender exercises both here in North Wales and, and across the border in England. We have a variety of contracts that um, we bid for. Um, traditional contracts, uh, design and build, of which a large proportion of our work at the moment is design and build, but we still have to go through the procurement exercises. We still have to pre-qualify and there is as much work goes into the pre-qualification pre-qualification exercise as into the tendering exercise. We also undertake works on a partnering basis with, with public sector clients and we're involved with some minor frameworks. F from our point of view, um, nearly 90% of our public sector contract works now require us to go through a pre-qualification exercise, irrespective of the value. We find that even with the six North Wales local authorities, there is a large disparity, and not just the local authorities, but other public sector organisations here in North Wales, um, where there is no similarity in, in some of the questions and answers that they demand of us. And we also find there's an awful lot of unnecessary duplication of, of, of answers and, and questions. The main barriers that I see that, that face us, and not only us, but other SMEs, is, is, is the cost in terms of time and resources bidding for projects. Um, a recent bid that we did here in North Wales, in, for us, including going through the pre-qualification exercise, getting through the pre-qualification exercise, only having to do it again because of a, a challenge under the European procurement regulations, Getting through it a second time and then preparing our tender bid actually cost us in hard cash £32,000. That's for a scheme that is just over 7500000 million. 
If we look back four years ago, the process was far simpler. There were no PQQs. We'd get a tender document arrive at our office. There was no quality bid. It was just a, a, a traditional bill of quantities that we would price up and send in, and it'd be the lowest, lowest tender wind. That's all changed. The other barriers to a lot of companies, especially to SMEs, is, is the amount of accreditation that you need to, to win and to be successful in the pre-qualification exercises. For us, for example, uh, we have construction line, we have CHAS, which is another health and safety requirement. There's a safe contractor, then we've got the ISOs as well. These cost us a lot of money to, to implement and, and to maintain and to go through continual audits. There's also the challenges to the PQQs and tenders now. Um, and there's a, there's a lot, of, lot of mystique around the, the challenge process, what you can challenge and what you can't. And, and a lot of the time, the cost outweighs doing anything about it. There's the new public procurement remedies legislation that came in, into, in December 2009. And like most SISs, we don't have the expertise to navigate our way through that legislation. And I think and, and believe under the project, the winning tendering project now, that we will have some guidance to and, and access to, to help in that area. We also find that we get a lot of poor feedback from buyers regarding the submitted PQQs and tenders. We usually find and in a lot of feedback sessions that we go to that it's a case of just paying homage to the aggrieved contractor because he hasn't won and we'll get this over with as quickly as possible. And we don't get the meaningful help that we need to, to succeed second time round. And I think Diane referred to that in, in, the, in the workshop that she's been to. Um, is that we do need help to, to see where we're going wrong so that we can make those improvements. Um, databases. There are a lot of databases out there, and Construction Line being one of them. Um, we, have to, we have to pay an annual subscription. We have a lot of information to keep up. The idea of Construction Line many years ago was it would save the public sector a lot of time in, in the process of procurement because a lot of the standard information was there. Unfortunately, that is not um, universally accepted by all public bodies. As far as the future is concerned, um, I think current strat procurement strategy is going to make it very difficult for SMEs to, to win public sector work. Frameworks, again, are also very difficult to get onto. Um, a recent one, a large package that we bid for, Paris, Powers, Keredidian and Gwynedd, which was um, a framework for schools, 21st century schools. Unfortunately, not one Welsh contractor managed to get through onto that framework. We haven't as yet had our feedback, and that, that tender has been let. Um, we find that large national organisations are more able to meet the demands of the pre-qualification exercise and quality bids because they simply have far more resources than we do. What is good news is the Supplier Qualification Information Database, um, or SQUID as it's called, which is being developed by Value Wales at the moment. And that, I think, is very refreshing for us because that seems to be the first positive move forward in trying to put a database together of information there by bidders like ourselves, suppliers, for public sector to, to get the generic sort of information of all companies. Because at the moment we churn out pages and pages of paperwork, repeating paperwork and um, demonstrating what we can and cannot do time and time again. And there seems to be an awful lot of burden in terms of producing that information. So I think in terms of the squid, it's going to be very useful. And once it's implemented, and I think by the end of this year, we're going to know um, exactly when this hopes to come online. But we must ensure that Welsh Assembly Government do help support this and encourage local authorities to, to take up the, the, the database. 
The Winning in Tender project for us, um, as I said, I was involved and, and contributed to the Barrows to Procurement Report, which was a very in-depth research into the way that we go about tendering, and the costs and the pitfalls for us. So to me, the Winning in Tendering um, project, again, is another positive, but it's, it's something that's going to be put forward that's in a plain, understandable guidance for us all, because that's what we find is lacking out, outside there. There are a lot of consultants out there who are willing to, to help you, but it's not in an understandable manner. Um, repeating what I probably said earlier, Winnie and Tendering has, has grown out of the Tenderwise project, and it's to help the, the small indigenous suppliers and the SMEs. There's also the, the, the procurement remedies law legislation, which is very difficult for companies to, to understand. I, for one, don't understand it. And we're looking towards Dermot and the team here at, on the winning and tendering project to help us through those processes and to understand that legislation. There's the quick and effective review procedures um, for suppliers. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll perhaps explain myself a little bit better. In the pre-qualification, we find that they're getting larger and larger, and the questions that are asked in there are even more onerous. The problem is, is that we also have to look from the public sector side, that they need to make sure that every die, I is dotted and every T is crossed, because they are open to challenge under the European Procurement Regulation. So I do sympathise. I'm not criticising the public sector. It is a minefield for them. Um, exploring the processes leading to the undesirable consequences from the SISs resulting out of change in procurement behaviour by public bodies. For example, a question can be put in, in, into a pre-qualification questionnaire that could affect a lot of local businesses. And, and we, for one, know we've, we've lost out work to, to our counterparts from across the border. Work on our doorstep that has has gone to someone else because we were not able to meet that requirement that the, the, uh, the buyer had put into the pre-qualification document. That has a great knock-on effect, not only to, to companies like ourselves in, in, in North Wales, but also to communities in terms of, of benefits that they could have derived from companies like ourselves. The other positive is, is, is in terms of the case studies and guidance that's going to be available from, from winning in tendering. And on, on a sort of final note, I would like to congratulate Dermot and the team here for, for the hard work that they've put into this. And certainly looking forward, I'm excited about this project and the help it's going to bring to companies like ourselves. Thank you.